I don't know how it originated. I think that I found a very good costume and I put it on one time and I filmed a video with it. <laughs> this one time at band camp? <laughs> this one time. <laughs> um, and it just went wild. Right, guys, welcome back to the Beautiful Struggle podcast with myself, Jay Davis, a.k.a. Magic Eye. I am Pon Rhodes. We are at Ultimate Fitness here in Birmingham. They've had a new podcast studio built and it's very sick. So shout out to Simon Fan. He's been looking after everyone this past weekend at the Arnold's. He's had a few faces in you. There's, a, there's been a few faces in these seats. I know Jay Cutler was in you, Sean Ray, just to name a few. So... Shout out to Saifan um, for letting me use the studio. I've also got a nice new little setup going on. We've got a nice little backdrop as well from the recent Magic Eye events. Thank you to everyone that came along to that. So my next guest, if you thought bodybuilding was a niche sport, then the next guest I would say is probably the uniquest, if that's even a word, of them all. Multiple world record holder. I've got my notes once again. Professional competitive eater, more so known for her speed eating. She's beaten men three times the size of her at eating challenges. If I were to tell you what she eats, you probably wouldn't believe me when you actually see what she looks like. You may have seen her dressing up in outfits such as Wonder Woman on social media. I'm not really sure what she does behind closed doors with the outfits. And if you like hot dog sausages, you're going to love her. So, introducing, ladies and gentlemen... Leah Shutkiva. What a fantastic intro. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Beautiful Struggle Podcast. Thank you for having me. It's it's nice to be here. Yeah, it's a nice little studio we've got. Yeah, brilliant. So smashed Beautiful. it. Beautiful. He did smash it. I found out yesterday from yourself that you are the, well, you were involved in the actual designing of this whole place. Yes. Yeah, I did the floor plans of this place. I yeah. used to be a commercial interior designer before... Life took a turn. <laughs> in another life. <laughs> in another life, in it another feels life. like. Yeah. So, do you, so are you based local to this place? I am South Birmingham. Right. About 20 miles in a town called Redditch. I know Redditch, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I used to work in Birmingham, so this was my home stomping. Home gym, That's yeah. That's it, home gym. Where do you train now? At Elite Fitness Redditch. Elite Fitness. Fantastic gym. Wicked. Shout yeah. out to Elite Fitness. Shout out. I've not been to Elite, actually. You need to go. I've been to many gyms around the UK. I've never been to Elite. You'll be blown away. They've yeah. just refurbed. They've put in a new mezzanine. There's a massive leg room. It's it's honestly worth visiting. Yeah. And I, it's just fantastic. Oh, sick. Shout out Chris Mosley, who is like the visionary behind it all. And yeah. he's just so passionate. Loves what he does. Awesome. You can tell. I didn't think this would be a fitness-based podcast today, but we're already talking about gyms. <laughs> fitness is everything, isn't Fitness it? is everything. It all boils down to fitness. It does, indeed. Um, right, so, with uh, <laughs> where the hell did you get into all this, what you do now? Where did it's you start? A, it's, a real, it's a real slog of a story, but I will try and keep it brief. Yeah, just like, how, how do you initially find out Okay. This is a what you do. You. Yeah. <laughs> What's where, where's that moment where you think, yeah, I'm pretty good at this. Okay. So about ten years ago, I was dieting for a bikini show. Oh, fitness again. Yep. And I did a 16 week diet, I believe. And whilst I was doing that diet, my older brother would go to a local restaurant and attempt a food challenge with all of his rugby mates. Right, yeah. And my brother and I have always been very competitive, very close in age. He's my older brother. He, like, we just have that camaraderie between us. Mm -hmm. And he'd go to this local restaurant, attempt this challenge, and failed. And he failed it 10 weeks in a row whilst I was dieting. Oh, no. And at this time, I was just so deep into fitness and into the bodybuilding world and dieting world that I was just dreaming food. Everything was just like, I was so obsessed about how things tasted and the textures of things. And deep down and on the inside, I'm just a foodie. Yeah. But fitness kind of took over because gains. And <laughs> <Bro>. then, <laughs> gains, <bro. laughs> and then 
he would come back, tell me he failed, and I'd just banter him about it as you would as a sister. And then I remember the last time he called me and he said, I did it. And I was like, oh, did you? And he was like, yeah, no, I, I failed again. No. <laughs> so I had a tiny bit left and I failed and it's just so hard and I can't do it. And I thought, yeah, you're rubbish because we're, as a family, like we're known to be big eaters. Yeah. My dad's a big eater. Now he's outrageous. Okay. He's like my predecessor, I would say. Yeah. Um, and my mum is a she was a chef and she's such a feeder that right. we're just known to be like a big eating family. Yeah. And he said, well, you think you're so good. You come and show us how it's done. So anyway, I did my, it goes after your little bikini show. So when <laughs> yeah. I did my little bikini show, yeah. um, I placed, but I didn't do great. I didn't really like the world and I don't really see myself as that much of a showman, like mm-hmm. a stage girl okay that I, I mean at the time no social media I was super shy and so I didn't yeah that that life wasn't for me that doesn't sound like where you are now when you say I was you're super a different shy. person yeah Let, I'll give you a bit of a background so even though I was in fitness I would say I was doing that because I needed to gain that kind of confidence in myself okay yeah in my physical self because I always had confidence as a person yeah and I was very shy I was very like I just not photogenic, very shy, didn't like to be seen too much. Mm-hmm. So doing this was just a big peer pressured thing because I was kind of the only girl lifting weights at my mm-hmm. gym. And everyone was like, you have to do it because you're getting this physique and you'll do great and whatever. Yeah. And I'm competitive, you know, like that's just in my nature. That was so in I thought, you, yeah. It was, it's always been in me. Mm. I've always kind of risen to a challenge and thought I, I can do this. Um, I came away from that show, didn't do too great. And I went to this restaurant. It was crust in Shirley. If anyone's familiar, it's no longer there, but that was nothing to do with me. Um, Went to this restaurant. They released a new challenge. It was a dessert challenge. It was a waffle stack. And they recognized me from a Facebook thread of my brother and I just going like backwards and forwards, like bantering each other about the challenge. Yeah. And they said, are you going to attempt it? And I said, uh... I mean, not wanted to back down from a challenge. I'm like, yeah, okay then. And then basically I wolfed down this thing in like six minutes with a spoon, no hands, no mess. And everyone was like, what on earth? And when I tell you I had more accolade eating a lot of food fast than I ever did getting a degree in architecture, doing a <laughs> bikini show, yeah. hitting my fitness goals, being an intelligent human being. I can't even tell you the the difference yeah and i just thought wow there's something in this like i'm i'm probably quite good at this yeah and naturally i did nothing about it because this was 10 years ago this was kind of at the start of what social media has become yeah and i was so shy i didn't want people to see me eating like an animal online so i didn't (laughs) yeah document if you're not really putting yourself out there at all online the last thing you want to do then is be filmed eating because it's probably the worst thing in the world and as a woman like as a woman i just thought i'm never going um, this is not an attractive thing to do and so i need to be like small and agreeable and i'm already quite threatening as a person i would i would say (laughs) threatening <laughs> threatening and then i mean i'm quite um yeah threatening is the word threatening, is threatening the word. looking person <laughs> yeah go. yeah dangerous looking dangerous looking dangerous looking so i figured i'm not helping my own cause okay and so i did nothing about it so it came In- to intimidating, be intimidating i think was the word you're we looking go. for not threatening, not threatening. we're intimidating, intimidating. <laughs> sorry everyone i'm intimidating <laughs> um but because of my background trying to keep myself quite small yeah but having quite a lot behind me i think if you try and keep yourself small you just keep getting pushed out Mm -hmm. yeah so long story short on how i actually got into doing this because it was my worst nightmare In 2015, so about two years after my first ever challenge, I'd done a few different challenges just for fun. Mm -hmm. Cheat days were like challenges and I would do them maybe like six times a year. Right. Um, And I ended up really enjoying it. You know, the first challenge I ever did, I was so depleted and I never felt stronger going back to the gym the following week. Mm. And I thought there's something behind this, behind like a real refeed as opposed to just like, going out of your plan yeah and i thought okay 
I can probably integrate this into my life and it probably benefit me in the long term. Actually putting those extra calories in that I was terrified about yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it did help. 2015, I'm working as a commercial interior designer in an office in Birmingham and my boss got a phone call for me because I'm the only Leah Shutkeever in the world. I was found by the, the world. The only Shutkeever in the world. I'm the only Leah Shutkeever yeah. in the world. So I was found, my professional profile was found by a team looking for a Team UK or a Team GB for the World Championship Eating Competition right. that was held in New York by a Japanese TV show. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and they said, we found you because we've heard about you as the girl that eats the food, but we can't seem to find any content online of your challenges and records you've done. Yeah. And I explained to them exactly the story. I'm really shy. Yeah. I don't like to film <laughs> I stuff. I don't want to be known for it. <laughs> no. And they said, we're doing a qualifier. Top four places get flown to New York to compete at the World Championship. Would you be interested in coming over? And I said... Um, not sure. They said, we'll pay you for your time. And I was like, okay. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. So I ended up going to London. I met with everybody else competing that day, which was like 12 to 15 people. Japanese TV show. We were on a boat, top deck, outside, mid-winter. It was oh. freezing cold, <laughs> eating scotch eggs. As yeah. many as you can in 30 minutes. And the top four places win. Yeah. And I won it. Oh, you won the full thing? I won the full thing. I went in as a nobody, as a complete rookie. There were two people that were known in the eating world. Yeah. One had a YouTube channel. In fact, they both may have had YouTube channels. Then um, a couple of people that I'd recognised from online, mm -hmm. the rest, no idea. And I was just like, wow, I must be Clean good at this up. thing. How many people were in there? 12 to 15 people competing. From around the world. No, all from the UK. All right, yeah. So this was the qualifier for the World Championship Eating Competition. Right. Top four places would be Team GB ah, right, to okay, fly yeah, out no. to New York. Got you. And then I won, and then we had three kind of runners up. We all went as a team to New York, mm -hmm. and we competed at the World Championship. Now, this was like my first ever thing. Yeah. Paid opportunity. And I didn't have anything. I didn't have a social media presence. I didn't have a name. I had no idea how yeah. good I was. And in New York, I was going up. So it was a ton of rounds of head-to-head -head challenges. 30 minutes on the clock. Eat as much as you can. The person that eats the most wins. Mm. And that was the concept. I was up against Japan's number one competitive <laughs> eater. His name was Max Suzuki. Is Max Suzuki. Yeah. And he was very well known and i remember going up to the promoter for the team usa and i said do you have any advice for me because i have no idea what i'm getting myself into <laughs> yeah. i like is there any strategy or yeah. and he said he looked me up and down he just said just do your best that sounds like what you said to nathan Dasher on the first eating challenge <laughs> I, I just do your best. Yeah. Just do your, I don't know what you're supposed do to do with best. that. Do your best. Do your best. Which is what my dad always told me growing up. It's yeah. just like, just do your best. And I just, I don't, oh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that kind of advice. Yeah. Anyway, myself and this Japan number one eater were head to head the entire way through up until the last couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. And then he overtook me. And at the end, the promoter came back to me with who I deem to be the greatest eater of all time, called Molly Schuyler. Right. And they said, you're really good. And that's when I knew that I was really quite Onto good. Onto something. Um, then what am I supposed to do with that information? Yeah. <laughs> you're really good. Get back to your architecture. You're really good. You're really good. That was, that was what I got. So... I came back here and led a very normal life again, back mm. to work with a weird, crazy story to tell. Yeah. And then I got called again in 2017. What year was our first one, did you say? 20... 2015. Okay, two years. It was two years, but it felt like that. Yeah. And we were like talking about going back and we really wanted to be called back up. Yeah. So we were called back up and flown out. And I remember that the American team were predominantly YouTubers. Right. Competitive eating YouTubers. Yeah. And we had a conversation and they said, you have to start a YouTube channel. You have to. 2017. Still. 2017. And then again, I 
procrastinated about it. it. 2018, I started a channel and then everything was just built from there. Snowballed from there, yeah. Yeah. That's a mad old story, that. It's long, so I apologise. No, no, no. It's it's, It's a lot of details. Yeah, but it's it's not overnight, is it? It's not an overnight sensation. Because obviously you're, you're, I know from me being aware of you probably the last two years, perhaps on social media, it seems to have like, blown up over that time mm-hmm. I'm not sure it's probably been longer than that but to people that have only been aware of you the last year they think you've just come out of nowhere but then that's 2015 approaching 10 years in the game yeah 10 years of chowing down at the top yeah it's bizarre because you know when you feel like you found your place yeah because I fought it for such a long time and it just kept coming around and getting these opportunities where people were like, we will pay you to do this thing. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm not going to turn down money and travel to do something that I innately find not easy because I put a lot of pressure on myself, but I'm very good at it. And people find it fascinating that I'm just like this woman that eats like a (laughs) ravenous animal. It's crazy. (laughs) It is frigging crazy. Like I've witnessed witnessed it twice now in person. (laughs) I've seen it all on social media, but I've seen it in person, and it's just it's it's ridiculous. It's disgusting. It's not no, it's not the word. That's not the word. Okay. It's not. I know you feel like that's the word, but it's not. <laughs> that's not the word. It's just it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous yeah. in the most, you know, not offensive way. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Respectfully. Respectfully <laughs> ridiculous. Um, yeah, that's crazy. What kind of. Um, you know the the people that were at that the the main competition. You said like the people from America and everything. There was a guy that I used to watch on YouTube. He he was in the he was in the fitness industry. Pete something. Yeah, Furious Pete. Furious Pete was he there? Yeah, no, he wasn't. No, Furious Pete. I believe that he's based in Canada. Ah, oh, Canadian. Um, yeah. but no, he was. So I'm a big fan of him. Yeah, he broke some world records before. I even had the idea to do it. Okay. And his YouTube channel was enormous. And he already had such a place in the world that Mm. he probably wouldn't have gotten involved in any contests. He already had his own things set up. Um, But no, big fan. Is he still about? Yeah, so he had some health complications. Yeah, I remember seeing something. And that happened on a cycle, I think, at least once a year for a few years, mm. and I think he ended up coming off social media. Ah, it's a and shame. It's, it is a shame. Yeah. It is a shame because he's just so naturally good. Yeah, yeah. And he seemed a cool guy from like yeah. his content as well. Yeah, I remember he messaged me once, and I, I melted and died. Yeah. I was like so exciting, but he just kind of I broke some world records, and I think he said something like. Keep, keep, keep doing it what up, doing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's sick. That's all you need, isn't it? Furious Pete, that's a name from back in the day. You've mentioned the w- world record a couple of times in what well, we've just gone over. Yes. How many world records have you got? I have broken 33 Guinness World Record titles in eating. 33? Yeah, pretty wild. But this is another thing that I think is massively, like, misunderstood. Like, I didn't i'm very fortunate i'm very blessed i've been offered opportunities i probably would have never thought about going for Mm -hmm. and me being me i just kind of go for it and hope for the best but i remember my first guinness world record title i broke it unofficially on my youtube channel which was a tiny little channel Mm -hmm. nobody was watching my videos and i just thought i saw the record and i thought i probably can beat that yeah and I did it. And then I was contacted by a TV show. They said, we've seen your unofficial Guinness World Record title mm-hmm. break on your YouTube channel. Would you be down for doing it for real? And I was like, this was 2018. I was really, really shy. Like, really shy. And the worst thing for me in the world would be to be on TV. Yeah. And I just thought, no, I can't. And they were like, well, we'll pay you. And you can break it for real. And we'll yeah. get like an adjudicator in. And... I just thought, you know, you know, I'm not that bothered about it being real or not. And then they upped the ante and I was like, okay, let's do this. Without, you can tell me, like, no. What kind of money do these people kind of pay to do that kind of thing? In hindsight, nothing. Right. We're looking at a few hundred pounds 
to do something that they would not have the opportunity to do with many other people in this world. Yeah. So when we're talking about Guinness World Record title breaks, like you're making history in yeah. that moment, and that is invaluable for a TV show. Yeah, yeah. So in hindsight, I probably could have charged an awful lot more than what I accepted, but at the time... You didn't I, know anything. I didn't know any better. I didn't know, better, I didn't yeah. know my value in the market. I didn't have a following. Yeah. I didn't like, I didn't feel like I had the place to ask for more. Mm -hmm. um, now it's different. FYI. Oh. <laughs> now just it's different. Just your chest up. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> You've just got to back yourself. Yeah. Um, and I do remember going and filming this, this world record on this TV show and I broke it first time and the feeling I got from breaking that very first world record was a feeling I cannot describe at all, nor can I imitate or do it again. Mm. And I think that every world record since then has been a quest to kind of feel that euphoria that I felt from that first record break. Yeah, yeah, okay. And it's difficult. Searching for that. I think feeling. that's what's been fueling me this entire time. Mm. Um, but world record they had they just flew in after that first one yeah i had an opportunity from another tv show call me i broke three on that one then guinness world records wanted to do a photo shoot for their book yeah in 2021 and whilst i was on set they were like do you want to try and break some records whilst you're here <laughs> you just do a couple of challenges and, and break it, it was world records? that casual it was that casual and i was like is that sure. how easy you find it though um there are some records that i find easy there are others that i don't yeah the records that I find easy are most of the records broken between a certain time, like between certain dates. Right. Because this is a my theory, and I'm not a conspiracist, but like this is my theory. Mm -hmm. Pre-2014, the Guinness World Record rules and guidelines were a lot more lenient. Then onwards from 2014 to current day, yeah. I think they're much more strict. Okay. As in, you can only use one hand or um, you have to place your hands on the table before you start. Uh, things like that. Right, and so okay. the records pre-2014, I don't believe are actually achievable by today's guidelines and rules. Got you. So those I find really difficult and yeah. I have attempted and failed them a million times. But Is there a lot of politics in the fitness eating, fitness eating industry? No, that's wrong. The eat eating challenge industry um i personally wouldn't say so no i think that we all have our own lanes that we kind of stay in um i feel like i branch across the lanes because i'm not just a speed eater i can also do capacity I also do spice i i just kind of do a lot of everything and yeah. the world records just kind of edged me and put me kind of in a different category altogether but i've never fitted into a box and so yeah. i'm not going to start now with the um like do you get like obviously there's a few like big names in the competitive eating industry that's the friggin' term i'm looking for yeah. competitive industry so is it like not politics but do you get kind of get like a com like a competitive nature or drama between certain people or like you said where they're staying in their lane yeah but there's going to be i feel anyway from the industries that i've been involved in from the dj and i was telling you about off camera yeah. to where i am now there's always going to be that you know the fuck does she think she is or that kind of thing i've seen that a lot in those industries so i'm just seeing if it's the same in yours i think that most of that comes from the audiences because they're very die hard <laughs> so i think that my audience yeah. will like ship me like to anyone and yeah. be like like Leah is the best or the shirt is the best okay at xyz and so if any other competitive eater try to emulate what I was doing yeah they would definitely they hear would from the people down, yeah. they would shut it down I don't endorse that yeah. I don't think that it's appropriate or yeah. necessary really yeah. because there's space for us all yes, yes. in this industry the biggest controversies I've seen is normally like YouTube <laughs> type stuff but i do think it's fueled by the audiences because they just love mm. the drama they just love to see some kind of conflict like i i know that there were a couple of 
shots fired between some American YouTube competitive eating people. Mm. And I mean, I, I, I can only look, I don't want to be part of one. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, what, what kind of where I was going with that question is like, do you see like the online back and forths and, you know, that kind of shit. So there is, so it does go on then, yeah? It does go on. I think the biggest thing, I guess, with me is there's a competitive eater called Beard Meat Food, who yeah. is Adam Moran. Adam and I both competed at the World Championship. That's how we met so yeah. very many years ago. We've known each other for a long time. I admire him a lot. He encouraged me to start a channel. And I he taught me a lot of stuff mm -hmm. so I forever I'm indebted to him yeah. and his knowledge um, but people just have this thing about who's the best in the UK and back in I want to say 2019 I was sponsored to go over to the States to North Carolina to compete in the world burger eating contest mm -hmm. called Highway 55 and the primary objective of that was to beat Adam because the sponsor just said the only reason that you're here is to be Adam. Right. <laughs> and that is why we've brought you here. Yeah. So do that. And I thought, okay, no pressure. I'll do that. Yeah. Um, and I did. I beat him. You did it. And I was named UK's number one. But to this day, I can't call myself UK's number one because he calls himself UK's number one. So I'm now UK's number one female. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, so I, I don't want to rock a boat because yeah, no, yeah. it's not necessary. No, no. And for me, it's like, I mean, I know who I am. I know what I've done. And if it's, if it's, the proof is there... I have 33 Guinness World Record titles and I, f I still feel like that outweighs yeah. this major... When you say you've got 33 World Record titles, you're supposed to do that. Oh, I'm sorry. I do the both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, That's mad. it's wild. It's, it's a wild ride, but again... People love an underdog. They love the underdog story. Yeah. They love a rise to fame, but they also love to rip you down. So I'd rather be just one step below. Do you know what's also mad about that is where you've had to like change that title to the UK's number one female competitive eater with the world that we live in right now. Yeah. Everyone is so like yeah. being politically correct. Um, you know, you should just have that title of... Number yeah, one. but because it's it's uno I guess it's unofficial because it's one contest in the states have said that I'm UK's number one because I beat the UK's number one from the year before. Mm. But you know, again, I'm not. My ego can yeah. very much be tamed in that yeah. sense, and That's fair people can really just believe whatever they want to believe, and mm. I'm unfazed by it. Yeah. You're not okay with it, though. No, I think it's pretty shit, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to say too much, because maybe I'll get him on the podcast one day, I don't know. Yeah. But I, have you any charges of fucking fortune to do things with people yes. now? Yeah, he's a so. very sought-after man, very successful. Yeah, well, fair play to him. Fair play to him. But Leah's number one. Yeah, respect. I respect yeah. him a lot. Um, so 33 world records. Yes. What's been your favourite one to do out of all those? The first one I ever did, and I say this to everyone, and it's because it yielded the greatest feeling of all time. Oh, the euphoria you yeah. were talking about, yeah. I can't... It was like... I'm a very sober, very aware person, and I have never felt so high in my entire life. <laughs> it was like an achievement beyond all achievements and beyond anything I could ever fathom. And I just thought, how is it in this world the me because mm -hmm. I knew me people don't know me like I know me yeah I am so on the inside I was so reserved and shy I didn't want to be seen or noticed or be in any way taking up space yeah and because I've always been this kind of really intimidating character I almost tried to like pull myself back yeah but I was always chosen to do these things always since I was a kid I was chosen to be student council president to be the ambassador for the college and mm. be i was always like the person chosen to be captain it's the universe telling you something that especially with the things coming back around year after year uh, every couple of years with eating and doing this and come and do that it's the universe this saying. is what takes me full circle it's yeah. the universe yeah and this is without sounding too woo woo because i know this frustrates some people and they turn off there are certain things that happen in your life until you learn a lesson that you cannot ignore. Yeah. And the more you try to ignore it or silence it, it will come around. It'll be louder and louder and louder. Mm. And it will offer you things. 
Like the world, the life has offered me opportunities that like, you just think it's, in, it's insane. Like, yeah. Why me? Why now? Yeah. And so I, it just got to a point where I just cannot ignore it. Yeah. And the fact that it just feels like I'm supposed to be here. Like I um, found my thing. It's, it's deep and I'm not the deepest of people. I'm not a, like hippie hippie and all that, but I, I 100% I'm on board with that. Yeah. Because I feel it about certain things with myself as you well. You can't ignore it. Without being uh, without being too deep. So what was that first record, did you say? What was that? It was The Fastest Time to Eat a Terry's Chocolate Orange. Terry's Chocolate Orange. And I did that unofficially on my channel. Beat a record of, I think it was 75 seconds, and I set a 72-second record. Mm -hmm. Then I did it on a TV show and set a 65-second record. And then I did it again for Guinness World Records and set a 57 second record. So what was the original one? 67? The original one was 70 oh, 75, I believe, by somebody else. Yeah. I broke it with 72 and then TV show 65 and then myself 57. So you broke, broke it by nearly 20 seconds. Is that right? <laughs> that, that initial one, yeah. Yeah. And that challenge, I think... Because I did a little bit of research. Okay. That is, it starts with the thing in the box. Yes. So you've got to unwrap box it. Box is sealed. You've got to take the foil off. Yeah. You've got to crack the segments into segments. Mm -hmm. And then chow down. Yeah. So for people that don't know what a Terry's chocolate orange is mm. or how it is presented to you. Yeah. It's a sealed cardboard box. So you open, take it out. There's like a plastic casing. Inside the plastic casing is like a round chocolate segmented chocolate orange literally a solid one yeah with a sticker on the top and foil so you have to unstick the sticker which i found the hardest thing to do <laughs> yeah. really quickly wasn't eating the chocolate it, it was the sticker honestly it was yeah. really really hard and obviously you have to smash it unstick the sticker open the wrapper and then eat you are allowed to drink water however if the water is tepid or hot the chocolate congeals and you can't clear your mouth if your mouth is not clear you will not get the record right okay so there's Just so many nuances tips, yeah, yeah. Just, fun fact i can't eat one segment of a terry chocolate orange why not so i get i don't know what's happened with me over the last few years I've, I've had this um thing happen where i get it's close to like anaphylactic shock right and it's only with certain things that i eat so whey protein i can't have whey protein my throat swells up it oh, goes really like mucusy and then it feels like i've got food up to here I can't eat for the rest of the day and that happens when I eat one mm -hmm. segment of a Terry's that's I mean, so, you've worked out what's in it no I just I just do a vegan protein now I just do, just do vegan that's it's devastating because, it is devastating yeah. because they're shit yeah. <laughs> they're the worst flavours in the world but um, yeah so that's my little take on Terry's I love Terry's chocolate orange it's like one of my favourite mm. things ever so yeah. yeah that's the greatest record I hold yeah that's pretty sick yeah I'm devastated well, that you can't have one though I know it's shit and it only happens with certain things as well okay. so certain chocolates I can eat it's weird um, I can get away with peanut m so I just go in on peanut m ms when I'm not dieting I wonder if it's anything to do with the flavouring though I think it's like something to do with like flavourings or sweeteners or something like that yeah. that they also use in in whey yeah anything vegan or made made for vegetarians in it that must sense be the way then yeah, yeah. it's just the way that's interesting um, while we're on the topic of sweet stuff I've got a gift from one of the new sponsors of the show oh. the Cookie <gasps> Champions stop so we've got a nice selection of cookies in there oh for you. Um, Magic 10 for money off. Oh my gosh, these look amazing. Yeah. I'm not allowed to have them at the moment, so you... <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> they, thank they you are so actually, much. They have actually sent them out, especially for you, so... Have they? Cookie champions. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm really excited, <laughs> really excited. Yeah. There's a few they, different flavours in there. They did, um, like, a selection box of... Thank you so much for that. That's so yeah. exciting. It's all right. Shout out to Cookie Champions, Magic 10. Enjoy the ASMR. Me unboxing the cookies. I'm joking. <laughs> we won't, we won't do that. I've, um, I've defrosted them, so I kept them in the freezer to keep them fresh. I so really I appreciate that. So they should be uh, good to go now because they've been out for like 24 hours. No, that's amazing. Thank you. There you go. Oh, I'm so good. Sick. You're There's sick. my uh, deed done for the day. Uh, so, before the speed eating. Yes. Architect. Yes. 
was that always the plan? Um, like, did you, from an early age, were you like, this is where I want to go with it, or? I have always been a very opportunistic, let's say. Opportunistic. I, I've always enjoyed the journey of life and what it presented me. Mm-hmm. And I've always been an overachiever and I focused on academia, like academics a lot or academia, I guess the word is, yeah. um, because I felt like it was really important for me to have a good education and to have a good career. And I always, my aspiration was to just be a businesswoman. Like yeah. I just saw this vision of myself just being so accomplished and mm. put together. Hasn't worked yet, but we'll, no, we'll I don't know. working on it. You're entrepreneur. Uh, yeah, that was never in, yeah. I always wanted sort of, like corporate girly corporate, vibes yeah. yeah that was like my the initial thing that I aspired to but I've always been a creative always since day one um but creativity and corporate world doesn't really no inter- <laughs> no so I studied business at college um I mean a, a massive story I will oversee because it's yeah. so long but she can talk I can I'm really sorry <laughs> I am such a chatterbox um I ended up studying business I aced the entire course I think I got maximum points so I could go to whichever uni I wanted to go to yeah and I went through this I don't know where I want to go with this next so I took some time out I met with some women in, in industries and I really loved the idea of working in the construction industry because I love buildings. Yeah. But I wanted to pursue quantity surveying. So I met with some female surveyors. They were looking for more women in the industry. And so I thought maybe this would be the place for me to be. Yeah. So I joined, like signed up for a quantity surveying course and they lumped us in with building surveyors and architects. And I actually really enjoyed the architecture course. Mm. And I remembered my one of my tutors said to me, like your architecture modules were really good like he was looking at my drawings and doodles in my book and he was like maybe you should look at doing architecture as a full course because then you can qualify as an architect and that's really cool yeah and I was like maybe I should do that maybe I should that's like another moment where the eating came in and you you're pretty good at this yeah but me not knowing like I don't know I don't I can't gauge it myself very mm. well. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if I'm good at something unless somebody says, You're pretty good at that. And then I go, Oh, okay. Am I? Am yeah. I? Thanks. Yeah. All right, thanks. Cool. Maybe I'll let's have a crack. Let's have a let's work it out. See if I can do anything with this. Let's see how fast I can eat this chocolate orange. <laughs> and that's a world record <laughs> later. Yeah. yeah. Um and then I ended up doing architecture as a full course and I really struggled at uni. I was massively into fitness the gym was like a huge priority of mine I found studying really hard I found uni really difficult because you're kind of on your own in a world that is unfamiliar Mm. but (laughs) fortunately for me um I've always had the same sort of character so I've always been very capable of presenting myself really well I've always been very good at talking as we know from today <laughs> really yeah um and always very confident in speaking so i was offered many opportunities off the back of that course and at the end of my uni time doing part one architecture and graduating i did a leavers interview with my head of school who owned um, a practice in birmingham and he offered me a job so i had a job out of uni straight away and I would say that in industry, I learned more than in my entire three years at uni. And I kind of found my place a little bit. Yeah. And then I was basically headhunted in a type of way for a commercial interior design job where they offered me an awful lot more money and a company car. And I said, yeah, no brainer. Yeah, I can imagine that being quite a bit lucrative financially, that industry. Yeah. Oh, no. No? No. Um, architecture, it doesn't pay what you're worth. It sounds like it sounds like it would be. It's very hard to get there. Right. Okay. Yeah. But it's a very difficult industry to find your place in because it's so saturated, I would say, now. Yeah. 
I would also say that any design jobs are very undervalued. And I can say firsthand that I wouldn't go back knowing what I know now about how people value design and creative yeah. jobs. Fair. Um, but yeah. The, um, I was going to, I was going to say something that I was going somewhere with it. It's gone. I think it was going to be down the lines of with the business hit, like the history of business that you've got in terms of like obviously working corporate, has that helped you with the new path that you're on? Everything that I've done has never been for nothing. Yeah. I think I've learned so much. Like when my parents have a greeting card company and they did markets and car boots back when I was a kid. Mm. And I used to work on markets and car boots. And what you learn is that you wake up early, you get the day done, and then you get home and you can chill. What you also learn is how to speak to people. And you also learn how to sell yourself and sell a product. And you also learn how to be diligent, have good timing, and all this type of stuff that all plays into it. Yeah. And then I set up my own little sister company to make money whilst I was at uni to my parents. And I made my own money. And then... I taught myself to bake and I set up a baking business where I make big elaborate cakes. Um, And I did that for very many years. Um, A bit of a passion project, but I made money doing that. And there was a moment in time that I was selling like proteins and creatines and like workout supplements of sorts. So I made money doing that. So I think that I've always had this kind of brain for doing a bit more like the side hustle yeah, mentality yeah. always have something on on the that's on the go yeah, um yeah so the like the business the corporate stuff definitely has helped everything has everything yeah. has helped everything's relative studying business was almost just a nice to have but yeah. i think that i did so well in that because i'd been working in business mm-hmm. since i was a kid yeah, yeah. Watching my parents be business people. So it's like second nature by that point. In second nature, nature. Yeah. had good teaching and very good conditioning. Shout out to the, the shutkeeper parents. Yeah, shout out mum and dad. <laughs> Whenever I say your name, it's like, um, what's it called? Uh, Shakira, Shakira. Yeah. Does everyone say that? Uh, at school, Shakira, Sha- Shakira. Shakira, Shakira. That's it. <laughs> Should be the new one. What's the descendant from that name? What's, what, what's your parents? So... The reason I look so foreign is because of my mum. She is from Guatemala, but her mix is um, Swiss Italian, Egyptian, bits of Native American. Wow. She's very mixed. My dad is English, Irish and Russian, but yeah. he is like my British family. So <laughs> that Russian last name was Sutskova way back in the day. Right. And it got translated and to the shuts to the shuts <laughs> and now it's just the shuts it's easier it is easier yeah when we were filming the, uh, the eating challenge and Nathan he was like well I would just call it the shuts just call he, it the, it's so I don't easy. think he wanted to actually challenge with the, the name yeah shut kiva's not easy until you just nail it and then it's yeah. easy I, I, to be honest when I read it that's how I said it yeah like how you say it I get shut kiva I get shut keva but yeah, yeah the shuts Shakiva. is fine yeah. the shuts we'll keep it at the shuts <laughs> has it been hard to navigate yourself through the Competitive eating industry, like honestly, no, no, the egg tub of the face. Yeah. I, I feel again. I will reiterate heavily that I am incredibly blessed, but also I didn't pursue this. This is something that kind of presented itself over and over and over again. Yeah. So perhaps if I was to pursue it, I would have felt a bit more difficulty in breaking in. <laughs> but because it was something that was just there Mm -hmm. and just so organically kind of it was organic but also i feel like i was made to do it Mm -hmm. so i had the work acumen and the diligence to do it and the perfectionistic like i to Mm. sort of create stuff in a type of way that people enjoyed yeah watching and i'm also an animal like people (laughs) like to see weird freakish yeah. predator-esque people online yeah. and I think I fit the bill you, yeah very unlikely you definitely character. fit the bill yeah. and then also people are like oh my god you're British <laughs> I'm a fucking animal I'm like what are you talking about of course I'm British yeah, <laughs> yeah. what year was it that you um, it was 2017 I think you said that you did the competitions yes yeah and then was that 
Was that the second time or was that the first time? Just second remind, time. Second time. Yeah. So was it like 2017 that it started kind of going with the YouTube channel and everything? My YouTube channel. So again, another blessed thing happened to me. Nobody was watching my videos up until I got a shout out from Matt Stoney, who's a massive YouTuber. Right. And he shouted me out on a video where he was attempting to break a record that I set. Mm -hmm. And I went from a few hundred subscribers to like over 10,000 subscribers and I'm monetizing and everything changed. That was kind the of moment. It felt. That was the moment that my YouTube channel yeah, started yeah. getting eyes on it. Mm. And then... I would say that I didn't have any credibility still. People would say that my videos are fake, even still now sometimes. Yeah, they still say it now to me it when just, I filmed it the other week. Really? Yeah, they were like, that, that's the, the the hot dog sausages. We're, gonna, we're always going to go back to the hot dog sausages. They're saying, um, ah, this filmed in reverse. I'm like, no, it's, I, I, I've witnessed it. It's legit. Everything I do, every, can I just... Make this very clear, everyone. Everything I do is legitimate. Why would I fake it? It's weird. It's so yeah. weird. I just, I've capitalised on the fact that I am weird looking, weird sounding and just a bit of a freak of nature. And I feel like people, people are out there pretending to be a thing, but I just, I could, I couldn't. I've got integrity. I have that, a backbone. And that's why people think it's fake because there's so many people out there f trying to fake it till they make it. Yeah. And that's, that's the problem. And I get it. Sometimes you have to do that, the fake it till you make it thing in certain ways, but then it's, it's depending on how far you want to push that. Like you said, your integrity, um, how far you want to fake it. But uh, you, you can't fake TV shows. You can't no. fake the world record. So I think that it's, it's okay for people to feel and think what they want to think, mm -hmm. but I guess it gave me some fire to just prove everyone create some credibility for yeah, myself. Yeah, create, create some credibility. Prove everyone wrong. <laughs> prove prove or at yourself least, or prove yourself right. Yeah, I, for me, it's not wrong or right. It's like judging books. Mm. I've always forever, forever been judged for the simplest of things into the most complex of things. Yeah. And it, it gives me, it gives me life, you know, kind of people going, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. And I just think that I've basically framed my entire personality on just debunking myths about yeah. me. Yeah. You mentioned the, um, competing, you comp competed in what, bikini? We do not talk about that time. <laughs> it's another life it's another life I did compete in a bikini show yeah. way back in the day no interest in doing it ever again UK BFF I think I did oh yeah. great sinking uh, ship yeah way back in the day would I compete again probably not 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 interested one bit just because and I have nothing but respect to the people that compete nothing yeah. but respect um there are certain things that you'll need to be prepared to do mm -hmm. in order to be seen in those industries. Yeah. And I feel like I'm not prepared to do them. Mm -hmm. So if you're not going to commit yourself a hundred percent, it's not the place for you. For it. And so probably not. Probably not. But I think you're doing the best lane there anyway, because you've been able to, you stepped in, <laughs> you stepped completely out. <laughs> yes. You've gone, like you said earlier in your own lane. Yeah. Uh, and you're killing it as well. So, yeah, th I think stay away from the stage as well, yeah. personally. There's uh, there's enough fucked up people in that industry. Um, you train still, though? Yeah, every day. Every day? Yeah. No rest days? I try and have one. Yeah. But I would say that if I have the time, I will go. Mm. And it's just because I need to feel like I'm there. Yeah. Even if I'm not pushing pbs i'm not like dying from doms i've been lifting weights for 14 years it's my habit not your hobby. Too, yeah yeah and it's my identity i i identify as a fitness girl mm -hmm. and to be able to support my own identity with the job that i have i do have to stay active so yeah so let's um let's get into that a little bit so in terms of these challenges I know from obviously speaking to you on the first shoot that we did together that I think you limit these challenges to like one day a week. Yeah. So let's have a little um, dive into that. Okay. Like with your training and everything like that. So your training 
every other day. Do you train on your days you do challenges? I will do. I will try and do cardio. It yeah. is dependent on how big the challenge is and how I'm feeling, how far I have to drive, and <laughs> where I am in the world. And if there's traffic on the M6, I like guess. Uh, yes, <laughs> it, it's all dependent. But yeah. in a perfect world, I would do one challenge a week. Every week is a different type of challenge. So some are big, some are small, some have high calories, some are just relatively yeah. low calorie. Mm. Um, speed challenge like they all vary yeah so I'll have them varied every week so that no two weeks are the same I will then make sure that I'm fasting into a challenge day um, meaning that I will pretty much stay to coffee and water a pre-workout um, on the run up into so 12 to 24 hours before I'll do the challenge on the day. I won't eat again. I don't eat the day of. I don't eat again. I have enough calories. It's fine. Oh, okay. So you don't eat... So the, yesterday you didn't eat anything else? No, so that day. was it. So I will do what I've done. That accounts for three meals-ish. Yeah. And then... Without I, revealing what happened. Without revealing what happened. But stay tuned. Yeah. It's so exciting. Um... And then I will fast up until my appetite starts kicking in. Now, my appetite, I don't think is normal. Like, I don't think that I have hunger cues and fullness cues like a normal person does. Yeah. And I put that down to when I started my bodybuilding journey, I had to very much learn to eat more. And Mm. I basically silenced the fullness. And I think that somewhere along the lines things got blurred and now I just don't have the same kind of cues anymore. I kind of eat at a time on a time, a certain amount of food and I just keep it moving. Yeah. So after a challenge, I won't eat the day of potentially not the day after depending. And then I will slowly start introducing calories back. Now my typical diet is a very clean, very boring, no condiments, plain, plain, plain food. I'm a foodie. And I would absolutely love to indulge every single day, Mm. but I do need to hit kind of an amount of calories per week to balance out. Yeah. And so I will just sacrifice the indulgence or the the thought of indulgence because it's never as good (laughs) as it as it is in your brain. Yeah. Um, and then just save up, kind of save up the calories. Yeah for opportunities to go out to eat to see friends to socialize to have yeah. a nice life so you're not super strict really you know obviously you're on it unless something comes up and then you've got that little bit of freedom to just go out and do and yeah. socialize yeah. i'm not super strict because the way my body looks nobody's looking at me and going you look like a competitive eater yeah so i think that i have a lot of wiggle room yeah because nobody's expecting me to be like shredded no so and also i'm not enormous and like a little bit of fluctuation is fine for me yeah i don't think anyone expects you to be in shape really (laughs) (laughs) because they haven't done their research (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah that's uh that's a cool way of doing it i suppose the um the idol you mentioned earlier uh the lady's name molly schuyler is she like top of the hill like for you molly is so good she's one of these people that she uh, i can't explain it if i was to talk about ranking the greatest competitive eaters of all time she's a top of the women's leagues for me okay 10 times over i could never compete and we've competed we've gone head to head and i have already known i'm gonna get absolutely smashed by this woman does she smash you it's the her, the guys on her team said to me she will never let you win but just try and neck and neck her for the first couple of plates so that's all i went for all i went to do was to try and head to head her on like one or two plates maybe yeah and that was my win but she is so good i saw her smash like a 72 ounce steak in about three minutes hands and teeth and i'm like <laughs> oh my god it's another, it's another league it's another it's just another level that's a bit mad for me to hear that because yeah. I see what you do yeah oh yeah she's she's. so much. I can't imagine if, if that's impressing you yeah because you're impressing everyone I mean because yeah. I've never heard of this woman in my life yeah so she's not is she out there out there on socials and stuff like you Um. no I would say that Molly came 
to the forefront of competitive eating in the US before social media became what it is today. Okay. And I think that maybe had social had she started on social media sooner, she would have built herself a following like Joey Chestnut, who wins the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest every single year for the last thousand years. Um, he, Joey's done really well because he's been supported by huge companies. I don't think that Molly started or or did enough in the right circles to build a platform big enough. Right. Okay. So I think that's why, but... That's why we don't hear of her as yeah, much. But just search Molly. She's... Outrageous. She's top dog. Yeah. She also has a wonderful character and she's like a very, very memorable person. Yeah. Very straight talking. And yeah, I've got a lot of respect for her. I think she's great. Do you speak a lot? We used to speak more, not so recently, but only the highest of regards for her. So if ever she messaged, I'm like... Straight on it. Straight on it. No ghosting going on. No, oh no, definitely not. Yeah. In in that world, like I think we're all pretty mutually respectful yeah. of one another. And like I said, we don't have like these we're all so different. We all offer a different thing yeah. that it it makes no sense for us to be against each other at yeah. all. No, that's very cool. What's with the outfits? Wonder Woman. Yeah. I need to address this because the whole what happens behind closed doors in the one nothing happens nothing <laughs> happens that is the sweatiest like noisiest costume you've ever noisiest. known it's very creaky like it it creaks it needs oiling or something yeah. it's get some wd-40 on that costume it's not sexy like it isn't at all it really is just work what is with it is that i don't know how it originated i think that i found a very good costume and I put it on one time and I filmed a video with it. <laughs> this one time at band camp? <laughs> this one time. <laughs> um, and it just went wild. Yeah. And then it was just like, come on guys. Just request. Give me a rest. I think there's a massive misconception with the world record things. No, Wonder Woman aside... I hold many world records mm-hmm. in swallowing things whole. The way that I even knew I could do that is because I was on a set of a TV show filming Guinness World Record titles. One of them was the fastest time to eat three pickled eggs. The record to beat was 23 seconds, I believe, held by a gentleman that broke it years ago. I broke the world record in my first attempt, dropped the third egg, caught it, ate it, 12 seconds broke the record but the producer said because you've dropped it I don't want us to get disqualified so can we run that again second attempt I put the first one in my mouth every intention to bite it it goes directly down my throat and I think oh okay so I can swallow these things whole so I pop all three in 7.8 seconds and then that is the moment that I can discovered that I discovered that I can swallow things whole like that and I just have the abilities yeah. to do that but that video even though it did well online it didn't do that well yeah however if i did it in a wonder woman costume viral it would go off yeah viral and i'm a businesswoman i do what does well over and over again until it doesn't do well anymore and then i rethink it and then move on to the next thing yeah why break if it's not why fix it if it's not broken that's mad yeah so zero gag reflex Zero gag reflex, but there's a statistic of like one in three people don't have a gag reflex. Oh, really? So I can, I've always been able to brush my tongue and I didn't know that, that people can't do that. Some people can't even have like free flowing water rush into their mouth because they'll like start joking. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. That is your human, <laughs> that is your human, that is your human body keeping you from dying. It's a good thing. It's a really good thing. I just don't have it. Yeah. I've also never had any choking hazards, so I'm, I, don't, I don't have fear. So when I'm doing challenges, like I've I've shown people on a video on my Instagram, you'll see there's a video with like a giant gummy bear and it gets lodged in my throat. Yeah. And I'm showing you that I can push things down with the muscles in my throat, yeah. which I don't think that people can do, but I didn't know that people can't do that. It's not a conversation you have with you your friends. You can control that, yeah? Yes, yeah, so I can control it. So when people say, what if something gets stuck? I said, it's got two ways of coming out. It goes down or it comes up. 
and I have the ability to push it, push down. it down. So with that video, my old self wouldn't have posted it because it wasn't seamless. Yeah. But what I found is those seamless videos where I do things so easy, people like it's edited, it's not real. I'm getting passionate now. Can you hear mm, me? I can see you. Yeah. But with this video, I thought, no, I've got to show people what happens. I have the ability to control it going down or coming up. Yeah. And so going down, like I could just push it down. So I just show people. I like lifting my head up. Yeah. And just pushed it down and then it went. And then mad. I ended the video. Everyone's happy. <laughs> mad. <laughs> That's mad. I watched the DMs like. Do they get mad? Do they get crazy? Hashtag insane in the DMs. I can just imagine, that's all. Yeah, the DMs are crazy. I would say that I feed into that massively. I used to get very offended yeah. by the types of messages I would get. Um, I quickly got over that because now it's actual content gold. I've so, seen you post in a few to your story and then like put a sarcastic comment oh underneath yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It's like the, the light of my week is yeah. going through my DMs. But I, I do get hundreds. I would I do want to make very clear 99% of the messages that I get are lovely. Okay. Lovely people, very encouraging, love my content, opportunities, work opportunities, people, lovely, lovely people. Yeah. But ever so often, I get a really, really odd, odd message. I could just imagine. An odd comment. there's some weird fucking people out there. There are some weird people. I made a whole other Instagram account called The Shutter's Inbox. And oh, yeah. that houses the worst of the worst. And, I mean, it's just endless entertainment for people. They just think, I can't believe people speak to people like yeah. this. Do you post stuff on there? Yeah. Do you post like the the, the messages worst of the, you, worst. the worst of the worst yeah, messages? Yeah. They the worst of the worst go on the shutters inbox. Yeah, and they really are quite jarring. Are they? And then the rest of them always go on my story. I think at least once a week I will do like a rundown of like the worst messages of that week. Yeah, and people are like, oh, I can't believe you get so many bad messages. I'm like, you should see the thousands of nice stuff that I get. Yeah, it really outweighs the bad stuff. Oh, that's good then, isn't it? But nobody wants to see people gas you up all day. And that's it. That that goes back to the drama and the politics in the industries where mm. you know it's the people out there that are normally create and stir shit up. You've just got to take the rough with the smooth. Yeah. I think that those really weird messages that I get, they are the highlight of a lot of people's weeks too. Yeah. And I get messages back like, this is my favourite thing that I that I see. And I think that it shows people that like, I am human. Yeah. I am reading it. And I'm not angry about them. No, no, you're taking it. I'm taking pinch of salt. it with a pinch of salt. And I'm responding in a humorous way because... It's a defense mechanism. You just turn everything into a joke. Yeah. And just laugh it off. Mm. Yeah, it's a good it's a good attitude to have. <laughs> While we're on the topic of DMs, then I put a little thing out on Insta uh -oh. to get some uh, some questions back. So I'm going to jump into the archive and see what the crack is. How interesting. Enjoying the monster. Mm hmm. Good. Yeah, shout out to you for facilitating. Fitness industry check, white monster. <laughs> so <Yeah>. typical, <laughs> so predictable. Yeah, right. You ready? Ready. We'll do these as quick fire as you can. We're on one hour five, roughly. Okay. So, I know you can talk like... <laughs> Name a challenge you thought, shit, I'm struggling with this. There have been a few. The most recent one in December, I did a challenge called Los Cojones Grandes, like the Big Cojones Challenge or something like that. Mm. And it was both a lot of food and very spicy. And I was like, I'm in trouble here. Midway through it. it from the start. <laughs> as soon as I tasted how spicy it was, I yeah. knew that that much food that spicy with a litre of milkshake I nah my stomach's just did you get it done? no failed no, failed mm. <gasps> there's just something about like eating raw chilies at the end of doing a full challenge like that that I just thought this is no good for morale yeah. it's no good for my stomach <laughs> yeah and all this milkshake is just gonna 
it's oh, no, too no, much. Yeah, no. too much. Fair, fair one. Have you ever had any dangerous effect after a food challenge? Yes, I did the UK's spiciest pie. Um, I a don't pie? know what it was called. The psycho pie, <laughs> psycho and pie. it was essentially a pork pie, and it was filled with like this very hot sauce, covered in chili flakes. And this was during lockdown, and I did the challenge. And I remember dying because it was incredibly spicy. I did yeah. it. I completed it. Yeah. But then I went and had a shower. And anybody that knows anything about spice, it has an oil called capsaicin. And the capsaicin got into my skin and I ended up in this massive rash or like red blotches all over my skin. I was burning. Yeah. If ever this happens to you, if ever you get any kind of chili oil on your skin, fairy liquid, like coolish water and rub it off because it will just spread with warm water hot water in a shower so yeah huge lessons learned that day so if ever you're eating a psycho pie <laughs> if ever you indulge in a psycho pie psycho pie what a psycho name for that pork pie yeah it was a psycho pork pie yeah i suffered with that one killed you off it did, almost um indestructible <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Woman. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of plays into it, does, it all, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Before I ask the next question, I want to check that battery because it's over 40% now. Well, 125, we're good. I think I should last this until. Yeah. <clears throat> um, next one. What does your training look like mm, to be able to eat like you do? We've kind of touched on it, but what your training is it like? crossfit bodybuilding i was gonna say uh, training wise i don't train to eat food i train because i train because i train because my train, body's yeah. conditioned to train so i used to do like a typical five day bro split mm. which then switched into like a push pull legs and now i just do a hybrid yeah. where i'll just i try and hit something every day i gauge how my body's feeling because i go through motions of depends when i've done the challenge but i will plan leg day and back day away from challenge days yeah um and i just try and train every day but i don't really have maybe enough of a structure anymore but it seems to be working for me yeah and i also try and get in some cardio every day mobility every day because i'm hypermobile and my body's very flexible so i need to do that keep on too. top of that yeah. yes do you um are you do you train like early mornings or midday or kind of at your leisure or depending on your schedule depending on my schedule but i try to get all of my work done by around one or two o'clock and then i go to the gym okay. so the gym is like the end of work day i say that end of like the to-do list yeah and then i'll probably start working again in the evening but all right yeah. you just kind of separate into work blocks kind of thing yeah reset go to the gym exert yeah come back and i do be exactly focused. the same thing yeah i normally do like a hard work block yeah. i call it in the morning That's where it. i've got like the heavy editing stuff to do <laughs> unless i'm on the road for three days like i am now yeah then i'll train and then i'll do light edit or fluff work yeah the and fluff work the, the stuff fluff work. the little emails and annoying things that yeah. you can do without thinking the yeah. stuff that you put off and then you're like How i need to get this that? done i know it's you easier think, isn't it you think you're original and we're just not no. we're all doing the same thing we're all copycats we are right from the cookie champions oh i think this is a challenge you know how many cookies do you think you could eat in 10 minutes that's a good question i these are quite big oh probably quite a lot to be honest do you reckon so in 10 minutes i can probably eat up to two and a half to three kilos so depending on what how, how heavy, heavy they are. each one of these are is probably how many i can do <laughs> a lot is the answer it could be a challenge on the cards there cookie yeah. champions <laughs> you never know um a couple more questions we could look at that if you wanted to one day course if you're struggling um where's the other post here we go right uh oh it's no it's, it's just um what we've kind of already asked you people are assuming it's what's she doing for diet and exercise in between these gigantic meals 
it's just literally yeah and there's another misconception that i do challenges every day and yeah. I, I really don't so i just want to iterate that like it's not possible for me to maintain any kind of physique if i was to do this every no. day are there people out there that do them every day or every other day maybe yes so randy santel will do blocks of travel where he will film back to back mm. um but he ha- has shown that he's gained an awful lot of weight yeah. in these periods and then he will spend the rest of the year getting back into shape yeah but i don't you don't I, want that i don't want to do that so i just try and toe the line i'm, <laughs> I'm sure again. that those peaks and troughs in body weight is not good. I mean, <laughs> coming from someone that does off season and then preps, yeah. that's not really. I'm contradicting myself. It's hard, but it's hard. Yeah, it makes things a lot harder. I'd rather just stay somewhat. Yeah, just in level. Line. Yeah. yeah, balance, bro. Balance, bro. Balance, bro. <laughs> um, someone said they've just watched you smash the breakfast challenge in Bicester. Is it Bicester? Bicester. That Bicester. was the Oxford one. Um, I think that was. Yeah, I think that was. Um. That was a while ago, actually. Yeah. Uh, but it, it did really well, that video. Breakfast challenges tend to do really well. I tell you what I watched you do the other day. I don't like watching eating videos. That's just because I'm normally I'm dieting and I just... It's torment. I'm starving. It's yeah. torment. But I did watch... Um, I think I was showing my missus you doing the steak like platter at uh, Miller and Carter, I think. You had like <laughs> three of them. And like one one of them is like a challenge, yeah. and then you did three. <laughs> so Miller and Carter do this butcher's block. Butcher's block, that's it, yeah. And the butcher's block isn't necessarily a challenge; it's a sharing platter. Okay. And they reached out to me and they said, "How many?" Like, no, they they invited me to come and do one. Mm. And I said, oh, just, "Let's do two because seeing the weights of the one, it felt." a little bit like an injustice to my audience because if I ever do anything that looks too easy yeah they kind of give me a bit of a hard time and they just said no you can do two of these they want to see you challenged don't they they want to see they want to see me they do want to see me challenged I think people like to see that you're really working for it and I tend to make things look easy even if they're not easy for me at all not consciously (laughs) so it was two butcher's blocks not three it was two Uh, sorry I thought it was three yeah, but you yeah. still demolished it. <laughs> yeah. You demolished it. It looked fucking lovely as well. Yeah, it was lovely. It did. I, it I, Miller and Carter's like some of the most consistently good places you can go and eat. Yeah. Yeah. Quality. Um, what ways to increase appetite in general ready for your challenges? So this is a tough one because... People associate appetite with ability to eat lots of food and there's no link. Okay. I say there's no link. Someone might disprove it. But (laughs) for me personally, I will go into a challenge sometimes with zero inkling to want to eat. And it's because it's my job and it's not as appealing as it might look sometimes. Um, Just get it together what i've heard like things where people eat loads of grapes and stuff before the no, days to expand their stomachs no. and... there's a lot of hearsay on what competitive eaters do in order yeah. to increase their capacity you can be born and have quite a large capacity i found that the people that are best at eating are the like really tall slim men yeah or really tall slim girls have always tried to gain weight yeah. and it's because they've always eaten high volume food to try and gain weight yeah and because of their body types they've not been able to do that so they've just continuously done that mm-hmm. you can also have the ability to eat something or just never it's like an untapped thing which yeah. i had have um but yeah i think appetite wise there's this misconception about you need to be hungry to eat i don't need to be hungry to eat no especially since i'm i'm trying to impress people that's why i'm here so i just kind of i remember when i started bodybuilding and wanted to put on muscle and needing to eat more food i wasn't hungry but i pushed myself to eat the food because i knew i was doing it for a greater cause Mm. and i think that's my mentality now in this I'm doing it for a greater cause. I want to win. I'll eat the food to win. Yeah. And that's what I think people miss is the willpower, the, will, mm. the reason, the why as to why you're doing it. Why are you doing it? 
Yeah, I get it completely. How many hot dogs did you eat on that challenge to break the record then? Um, oh, you're testing me now. So the most hot dogs I've ever eaten in one sitting was... It's a little story time. There's a lady called Linda Kurth. In 1977, she broke the world record for the most bunless hot dogs eaten in one sitting at 23 hot dogs. I broke that by doing 24 hot dogs in one sitting. And I believe I did it in something like one minute, 15 seconds. And the video is out there and it has been memed. So please spare me. (laughs) Um, I think someone said they, they memed it with something like when she says that she's a good girl, also her. And I'm the, whatever. Okay. (laughs) Whatever. Whatever. Just a woman <laughs> online. It's just like a it's like a minefield, but yeah. whatever. Then the world the official world record titles that I hold is the most hot dogs the most bunless hot dogs swallowed in one minute and in three minutes. I believe that the one minute I want to say it was like six or nine. And I think I you know what, I don't remember. Yeah. But they're out there. They're in the books. It's impressive from the numbers you're kicking out there. Uh, yeah, like I'm. If we boil it all down, I'm just a circus act, and what I do <laughs> is just very, very strange and very impressive, very yeah. like otherworldly, and I'm here for it. Yeah, you definitely are. Thank you. Which uh, which brings us, I think, to the end of the pod. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Is there anyone that you'd um, want to give a shout out, or do you want to touch on anything before we wrap it up? Um, any sponsors or anything like that or do you purely independent woman and just rolling by yourself I'm purely independent but shout out my mum and dad for making (laughs) an absolute weirdo yeah that's true what do what do your parents think about it um they're incredibly proud of the fact that I have built a career that didn't previously exist yeah and I've forged this space for myself Mm. and the achievements are clear and at, at the start they questioned my choices yeah I can imagine and they had many concerns but I think that I've proven time and time again that I'm completely mindful of what it is that I do I care about myself enough to prioritise my own self and my health and my mind yeah. and my body beyond money you're fully aware I'm yeah. fully aware and yeah. I'm not bored I'm not easily bored even though the beginning of this would probably say otherwise, I'm not easily bored. Lesson of the day to be learned. Yeah. And so I think they're over- overriding everything else. They are incredibly proud. Mm-hmm. Um, and my dad consistently says this thing. He'll go, um, he'll ask for like extra food and go, well, I'm not the world championship eater's dad for nothing. <laughs> Over, for everything. He's just keeps on saying for it. For everything. He's so proud. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm very, very pleased to have created that. Yeah. Shout out to the Shuts parents then in that case, if they do watch this. Do they watch your stuff? Do they like? Do they? Do they watch They're so it? So bored by me. Yeah. Go, um, oh, she's uh, she's at it again. There she goes. Well, funnily enough, I will show them like a highlight reel yeah. of what I've done. Yeah. And I love it when they laugh yeah. and when they are engrossed by certain aspects of the video. And I think, okay, great. Because they, they're a really tough crowd. Okay. Really, really tough. I suppose if you're winning them over then, do you know that? Yes. The public... It's like a litmus test. Yeah. Yeah. My oh. parents are like the ultimate critiques. Yeah. So if they are like passing something, I'm like, okay, fine. I'm yeah. doing good. That's the quality test. Isn't it it the is quality because check. I'm, yeah. I'm so hard on myself. I'm like, oh, I look horrible on this. And I'm like, no, you don't. I'm like, you sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you don't think so, then let's put it out there. Let's put it out and see what yeah. happens. <laughs> yeah. That's very cool. Very cool indeed. Right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much I know for you're having a, me. A busy, independent woman, as you've said. Um, intimidating and threatening. Threatening. So, We're sticking um, with the threat. <laughs> yeah. But thank you for your time. I appreciate it a lot. Um, very cool story. Enjoy your cookies. I will. Best of luck with everything you've got going on. I'm sure we'll see each other anyway on many food challenges. And perhaps in about eight or nine weeks' time, I might have a dabble myself. Yeah. If Nathan needs a hand. <laughs> but mind, mind you, going by yesterday, which 
wait and see the video. We'll we'll leave it there. Yeah, leave it there. But um, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for watching and listening. If it's on YouTube or Spotify, heavy duty gym wear, magic ten for money off, magic ten for money off the cookies, cookie champions, and I will see you on the next episode. Like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.